Hello and welcome back to CSC 505. Today we're going to talk about introduction to programming. As you can see, there's a few topics in this lecture. We'll talk about the learning objectives, how to program, what programming actually means, Python programming language syntax semantics, how to start with Python, the different packages that we can install with Python, alternative Python interpreters, how to use Python, and then run your own programs. And so let's take a look at the learning objectives, make sure we know what we're going to get from this lecture. So what we want to do is understand what programming actually means. You've heard coding, you've heard programming, let's see what it actually means. And then be able to set up your own programming environment. Now for this class, for your labs, practice, and things like that, you won't need this environment. However, when you're done with this class, you're going to still be able to write Python or want to be able to write Python programs. And to be able to do that, you have to set up an environment or be able to set up an environment wherever you go. You have to be able to dis be able to differentiate between a compiled and interpreted language, understand how Python structures its syntax and its semantics, be able to install Python in certain Python packages, be able to print strings to the user and force different endings, and finally be able to write a Python program and run it. So in this, we're not actually trying to learn what Python does, the syntax, that sort of stuff. We just wanna know what all these concepts mean generally so that we can actually relay this to any programming language that we use. So today, computers operate on a concept known as a stored program. That means we're actually taking the program, storing it somewhere like a hard drive, USB thumb drive, and then wherever we take that, we can execute our program. So unlike a microcontroller where the program is actually built into how the chip is designed, we, can, we have a chip that is designed to be generic so that any program that we put on it runs, and that's what we have here. Essentially, when we write a program, we're writing something that will eventually be turned into a binary. And zeros and ones are what binary means. And so that the compiler itself can understand what, or the computer itself can understand what we're trying to do. This translation can happen in two ways. We can either have a compiled language or interpreted language. Python, just for your information, is an interpreted language. So compiling means to put things together. And a compiler is an actual executable program. So it's kind of the chicken and the egg problem right here where we have a compiler and it's a program itself. So you have to write the compiler, program the compiler, and then have the compiler program other things. And so a program is a, or a compiler is a program that will put all of your written code together and then forward it to another piece of software. Eventually, when we delve down all to the end, we get what's called an executable. And an executable is a program that is understandable by the computer. So for example, if you took it like this web page that I have pulled up, the computer doesn't know how to execute it. It knows how to display it because I'm running Firefox, which is the executable. And so that's what we're trying to get. So a compiled language actually gives us this binary executable. And some examples of a compiled language is a C, C++, Java, Rust, Zig, all those different languages. What we're going to learn is Python, which is an interpreted language. Interpreted language uses a special program called an interpreter. So in our case, we're going to use the Python interpreter. And every single time we want to execute our program, we run the interpreter. The interpreter will always, or every single time we run it, go through your program and convert Python, whatever the code is, into machine code. It's slightly slower because we're not already in that machine code. We, are, we have to make the translation every single time we run your program. And then what we do is we go line by line and execute each line. Now this can be a problem because Python looks like it's executing fine. And then all of a sudden we get to a line that has like a syntax or some sort of error in it, and all of a sudden our entire program crashes. That's bad because we want to be able to catch errors and run Python without having any errors. So some languages you probably heard of are JavaScript, Python, and Ruby. And we're going to be using Python. All three of these are interpreted languages. So Python is rapid development interpreted programming language. It means most people that don't really know how to program that sort of stuff use Python because it is such a simple way to program. There's many different ways we can do the same thing because what it's trying to do is understand what you mean whenever you start typing code. The best programming language would be something like that would take plain English and do it at once. However, everyone knows that even when we speak to each other, there are room or there is room for one to misinterpret what we mean. And so the same thing happened with Python. So we execute these rules so that when we do something in Python, it knows exactly what you want to do. There's no ambiguity into it. And so the first thing that differentiates like spoken English with Python is we have a syntax. These are the rules that is that structures the language. In English, typically we put the subject first, the verb next, and then finally the predicate. That documents a sentence. We'll probably understand someone if they don't put it in this way, like eat I have done, 
okay, does, it sounds awkward, but we can pretty much gather that the person just ate or something like that. And it requires us to interpret it differently. However, to avoid ambiguity, Python doesn't allow us to do this. Instead, Python says, here is how you have to write Python language. And if you don't, you get what's called an error. Semantics, on the other hand, are what gives the words meaning. And so I ate is different than you ate. So by having the, the structure the same, the syntax is the same, subject comes first followed by a verb, but the subject is different. One is me, I ate, one is you, you ate. And so that has two different meanings and that is what the semantics are. And so you'll see contextually, whenever we write something, it means different in what context we're going to be putting it in. And so I'm going to skip the starting Python because that will require you to download Python. Now in here, I put 3.8.1, which is the most recent version. Your Zybooks, whenever you do your labs and things like that, you're going to be using 3.6. And so I put down here, where you are going to be doing 3.6.10. And that's the Python you'll probably want to use that way there it's compatible with the Zybooks labs and practices. Now Python already has code that has been written for you. If you had to keep writing everything from scratch, it would take a long time for you to actually get in there. So for example, whenever I type print, inside of Python, it's going to print something to the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Python script that I have. By the way, this is VS Code, if you don't recognize it. This is Visual Studio Code, and it's the easiest way, I think, for rapid development. Now, this is already a Python file, so if I go to debug and start debugging, I debug my Python file. And then it's gonna go into the execution environment and print out hello at the bottom. Now, there is a lot of stuff that outputs here and just tells you how it's going to be run but you just have to search for your output and it's gonna be hello. Now, if we had to write what hello did every single time, it would be a very long program that we'd have to write. Instead, Python has these packages that have been written for you. So several packages that you're going to be using in this class is pandas, matplotlib, numpy, and scipy. So you've probably heard of these before and maybe even used these before. These are used a lot in science and engineering. Now in Python, you'll see that there's multiple interpreters. Many people use Iron Python, which uses Windows.NET framework, JPython, which stands for Java Python. However, the normal Python is what's called C Python. That's where they wrote the interpreter itself in the compiled language C. Now C Python gets more of the updates because that's what's actually officially used inside of Python. They, they officially use it. They officially, uh, I don't know, have the documentation for C Python. And so that's what I recommend you use. If you use Iron Python, and this happened last semester, if you use Iron Python, you may run into one or two things that don't work as I put on these lecture slides. So I showed you already VS Code. Whenever we use Python, whenever we write a program, we're actually just writing text. It's like starting to write a book. Now, instead of a word processor where we actually have nice little fonts and stuff like that, we don't want that for Python. Because remember, once again, syntax of Python is, think of the end goal. With a word processor, we're trying to make something pretty so that somebody wants to read it. In Python, we're trying to make something so rugged so that there is no ambiguity between what I'm trying to get Python to do. Now, the simplest way is to use VS Code. And Python typically uses an extension .py. It doesn't have to, but typically we use .py so that everybody knows that's a Python program. Now, remember, Python is an interpreted language. And so we submit, we distribute the Python program itself. So everybody that wants to run our Python program gets to see how it's written. Now in a compiled language, that doesn't happen. You don't get to see the source code. For example, Windows, that's written in C and C++, but you don't get to see the code because otherwise everybody would be able to steal. It's proprietary. And so I've got print hello right here. Now this is the syntax. The name of the function comes first. There has to be parentheses. So let's go ahead and change these to square brackets and see what happens. So now I run and it says an exception has occurred, type error, built-in function object is not subscriptable. This is what we mean by syntax. Whenever I run the print function, it is expecting parentheses. If I don't put parentheses, Python doesn't know what I want. And so if I put back my parentheses here and execute our program, it runs fine and prints hello. This is what we mean by syntax. And that's why it's helpful to have a reference book where you can see all the different syntax because just like learning a musical instrument whenever you learn the syntax it's going to stick with you and you don't have to keep referring to it but whenever you're first starting to learn a lot of times learning the syntax 
or having just a small program that you can keep referring to just to see how the syntax is written is a very good idea. And I would recommend that for this course. So as you can see, you can read through most of this. Now, one of the biggest things I wanna point out is this line ending right here. Notice if we write two print statements together, like hello and world, we get hello and world. So there's automatically a line break in between hello and world. Now, sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes we want hello world on the same sentence. Well, Python by default, if we don't put anything there, will automatically put a new line character in it. However, if we don't want to, we can tell Python to change what ends in the sentence. So what I can do is I can put a space, I can put an empty string. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna put nothing. So hello and world are gonna be back to back. So let's take a look what that does. So notice now we have hello world all one word, okay? Instead of hello and world like we saw here. So if I put a space in for end, we're gonna get hello space world. So let's put space the world. Let's see what happens there. Notice we get hello the world. So what Python is gonna do is it's gonna print whatever you put inside these quotes right here. That Remember the double quotes tells you that it's a string verbatim. And then whatever we set the line to, that's what's gonna finish that sentence with. Now, check yourself and think, what is the ending that Python's gonna use here? Well, I didn't specify end, and so this is going to print the new line, which it does down here. That's where we get from this line to this line, which is my new prompt. If we didn't do that, let's go ahead and put end equals blank, and I ran it. Notice my cursor stopped here. Now Windows is smart enough to know if I didn't put a new line character, it's gonna to go to the next prompt anyway. But if you notice, my cursor stuck right here. And that's because I didn't put a new line on the end. So for each print, if I don't want a new line, I have to specify the ending. And so I'm gonna let you thumb through the running Python programs because this will be a slightly different for everybody that tries to run it. And so you just take your time in here and ask for help if you need help. So we went through this quite fast, and so I just want you to see what is going to be covered in this lecture. So we talked about the topics, we talked about the learning objectives, we talked about what programming is, which is essentially telling the computer what to do. We talked about Python programming language, which is an interpreted language, which contains syntax and semantics. Remember when I typed print with square brackets, Python did not understand it because that violated the syntax rules. And then we use print, and by semantics, whenever we type print parentheses and then some sort of string inside of it, Python knows to put a new line character as the ending. Now we can change the semantics by telling end equals and then setting what we want the end to be. We talked about how to start Python, the Python packages, pandas, matplotlib, scipy, and numpy. We also talked about the alternative Python interpreter being IronPy, JPython, that sort of stuff. So I'd be very careful using IronPython and JPython and stick with CPython. Otherwise, the programs that you think are going to execute correctly do not because different versions have different syntax and different versions have different semantics. We talked about using Python and how to run a Python program. So remember, a Python program is just this .py script right here. And when we, when we want to run the Python program, remember, Python interprets everything just like a book, it starts from top to bottom. So the very first thing Python wants to do is line one, which is print hello with the line ending space, the space. After that, Python's gonna interpret print world and print that to the screen, just like we saw. So it's gonna print hello, space the, space world, just like what we see down here at the bottom. And that is how Python runs your programs. Once again, the interpreter is called Python. That's why if you look through all this, if in this highlighted area, you can see C colon users, smars1, which is me, app data, and then python.exe. The .exe stands for executable. And so we're actually invoking the interpreter directly. And then as a parameter to the Python interpreter, that's the name of the Python script that we want to use. And so that interpreter will always just open our file, read what's in it, and start interpreting line by line and syntax by syntax. And that is how a Python program operates. Now you've gotten just a very brief introduction into the, how to start programming, what programming actually does, and now is the time to start writing programs, and that will be in the next lecture.